What's up guys and welcome to Hansween Day 20. Wow, it's crazy to say Day 20. And if you didn't know, which you probably should by now, Hansween is 31 tutorials in the month of October, which means a new video every day. Today's look is a very painterly, watercolor inspired skull. I wanted to bring you a classic for Halloween, a skull, but make it look like you were just jumping right off a canvas. All product details will be listed down below as usual, and let's get to it. Starting off with my bare face as always, and I started painting on my face a little bit, but I realized, wait, wait, one second, I need to glue down my brows, and you all know why. I do this with a washable glue stick by pressing my hair as hard as I can into my face up in the direction it grows, and while it's drying, smoothing it down with a layer of water. This helps to keep it smooth so it's not chunky, and I do this about three times. I skip the powder on this step, and I just go straight back to the paint. I'm using white to start sketching out the skull, and this is just a general idea. Also take out my nose ring, don't need that. We're not trying to really define the lines right now, we just want to give a general outline. Same for onto my body, I do my little neck bones, my collar bones, and a rib cage. I'm using a large brush for this step because I want this to have large brush strokes. Now to fill in the negative space in the skull, Going in with a little bit of a smaller brush, but still keeping it pretty big, and some black body paint. I'm going with a pretty exaggerated shape, but you can look at a reference picture if you've never done a skull before. I've done my fair share, so I just went for it. Again, right now this is just the base of color that we're making. It does not have to be defined. This is pretty much just filling in the parts that are absolutely going to be black, not just trying to go up against the white bones of the lines. I wanted it to be a little bit colorful, so I'm using green for most of the mid-tones of the look, still keeping with that large brush so I get these really intense, exaggerated brush strokes. And use this to even blend out some of the black and white tones that you have. This is such an easy look to do because you can just go with it, you can keep using the colors that are on your brush and mesh them around together. You can see I'm dipping black, yes, dipping black into black, apparently. <laughs> to fix any of the parts that I did brush away too much and added too much green on top of, we still want to keep that black there, but by blending in, adding all these layers, you'll get that very painterly look. I did the same thing on my chest, going around, and I'm starting to kind of create a little bit more of where the shapes are going to be, but still keeping it very general. Added a bit of a darker green around the outside of the face, and then I decided that I did want one side of the face to be darker than the other, where the light source is mainly hitting one side. That will more so even help with the illusion that we are just painted up. Because usually in paintings, they have a light source coming from one side. Working in these layers will also give you time to just look at the piece and to help create the shapes that you want to create. That's what's great, is that you don't have to know exactly how to draw a skull. You don't have to know exactly how to draw a ribcage. Because that's the whole point, it's just very abstract. Moving on to Dem Teeth, I'm using a smaller brush and white body paint, and I am drawing past the line that I did draw out for the original part of where the teeth and mouth are going to be, just because these back teeth will be darker to show that they are going back into our mouth. Sketch down a little bit of where the roots of the teeth are going into the skull and do the exact same thing on the bottom, but try to keep your lip line between the two sets of teeth so that you can hide that as much as possible. That will help with the illusion that the skull is really your face. This is a great tip to tell you guys, when you have a color on your brush already, use it to your advantage. I noticed that I did want to highlight some of these high points of the skull, so I went in with that white just to do that. Even though I'm working on the mouth right now, it'd be silly to dip back into black when I'm realizing that, oh shoot, I can use white on top of these highlights, you know what I mean? But now, now back to the mouth and dipping into some black. I use black just for the line between the teeth and then a dark green to go in between all of them. I'm not using a lot of water for these paints right now because I do kind of want a dry brushing technique. That will make it look more brush stroke like. If you use a lot of water, the colors kind of blend together, but if you use just a tiny bit and keep the paint pretty dry, you'll really see the strokes that you've created. 
When it comes to the back teeth, I add the color all over them because when you add the color to the back teeth, it makes it look more curved because the front ones pop forward. Using that same dark green, I'm using it to add some more darkness to the side of the face and to the chest. This is also to more so cover some of the skin that I still did have peeking out. And like I said before, making these back teeth darker will make them look like they are receding more into our mouth, so I lined those with black. Adding a little bit more color to the look will bring movement into it. Watercolor pieces to me, especially when they're very abstract and have a lot of color to them, just have movement to them because the water carries the color in certain ways around the paper. So that's what we're doing exactly with our skin. You can even carry these lines over top of the negative space that you have because this will keep your eye fucking moving to look through the entire look. You can also use whatever the fuck colors you want. I added more pink now, again keeping it more toward the darker side, but I added some obviously on the lighter side too. To help bring all of this look together, I took the black body paint and I started kind of sketching around the features a little bit because I wanted it to look like this was straight obviously from a canvas from our sketch pad. And this was the general outline we put first, so maybe it's just popping through the watercolor a little bit to show where the features are. Gotta add just a few more little highlights. I can't stop. Can't stop the highlights. And doing these just around the black lines will make those black lines pop more because if you have a really dark shadow right next to a highlight, that shit's gonna pop. I was about done and threw on a wig, but I decided that I did want some little watery tears. I do this with black body paint, and I use mainly water. I let the water just carry the paint down for me, which is pretty much what you do with the regular watercolor. Darken your little waterline. Whew, my eyes are red. Don't worry, guys. It's just because they're sensitive, and I'm filming constantly. Not fucking high, like some people like to think I am. I'm not smoking the reefer. And that is the entire look, your little painted up skull. Use whatever colors you want, whatever contacts you want to suit you best. A beginner can do this look and it is extremely, extremely striking. I really hope you guys liked it. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and use the hashtag Hansaween so I can see your work. I love the fuck out of you and I'll see you tomorrow.